of the Independent Community Police Oversight Commission to order. We do a roll call. Most definitely. And um, you will all notice that we have our new commissioner, Sarah Birch, with us today, oh, which will sorry. be apparent during Welcome. the roll call. Good. Okay. Commissioner Santa Croce. Here. Commissioner Alcalele. Commissioner Watson's out of town. Commissioner Evans. Present. Commissioner Altman. Yes. Commissioner Conwell's under the weather. Vice Chair Hargrave. Here. Commissioner Mary. Commissioner Billups. Here. And Commissioner Birch. Here. We have a plan. Yeah. Is there a motion to approve our agenda? I'll make a motion to approve the agenda. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Public comment is generally next. Is there anyone who would like to make a public comment? <laughs> At this time, we would welcome that. Not this time. Um, so, oh, that's not the public either. <laughs> that's Chris Frost, who is an assistant uh, city attorney. No, I don't. Smart. <laughs> well, she's getting ready to go. She does not have time. Maybe I should sit there. Since Zinov is not here. I have no problem. Just sit over here. Just sit over here. me a white person. Are you contagious? No. Okay. <coughs> you can breathe. She doesn't feel good. So you all have November 26 meeting minutes. If you would like to take a few brief seconds to make sure there are no errors, then we can have a motion to approve them. Move to approve. No, wait a second. There is one, one, uh, oh. the adjournment. Okay, um, just, did you second? Well, it's, we are Right, still because you discussing. have to second it. You have to move and second it before you discuss it. Just an FYI. So second. Okay. Discussion is the adjournment. Okay. It says Chair, Chair Othman, it's Commissioner Othman. Oh, Just I'm sorry. Word. Okay, I changed it. Yeah. Thank you. Any other discussion? All in favor of approving the minutes from November 26th? Aye. 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 Any opposed? They are approved. Um, I'm sorry, I heard the elevator voice. Um, <laughs> old business, the commission logo. Seems like a pretty um, tiny piece of business, <laughs> but one of the administrative things we have to go through because we are new. Um, you all got a chance to look at the logo last time. You suggested an improvement of making the first letter of each of the words in Ictoc larger. Um, no? I haven't seen it. You have the new one, right? In um, your book. There's one we had last week, last month. Yeah, she saw the new one. I saw the new one. And so Kim Wurtson was able to do that. And since we. I don't know if you want to pass it around. Um, and so we need to, to vote to approve the logo so we can start using it. If you all would like to look at it first. I told everybody I'm not feeling 100%. So you just want to give yourself a little more space. Just saying. I can make this right. <laughs> hmm. I should sit down there. <coughs> yeah. Is that is interesting. That's the thing to look at. The, uh, the fact that so that the the blue mm -hmm. and the black are cut off, but the goldish tan is the only full hand. I, oh! I didn't even realize that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like their voice might be more powerful than the ones covered. Yeah, there are actually three completely different hands. Mm -hmm. This is full. This is half full. This is different mm -hmm. than that. Pass it back. Oh, this way. 
here. Was it like that? Was that is that a cha subsequent change from the Not last really, time? But we Not have really, but we have a different set things. of eyes. Yeah. yeah. I wonder if she could do something creatively to blend them. Mm. And that mm -hmm. they are mm -hmm. you, you they were different hands. Mm -hmm. Make them more proportioned, more equal. Mm -hmm. Could be good. Yeah. I think it's very nice. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. I am being. How are you? Yeah. I feel well. I have to. Um, See that? Mm -hmm. Thanks for bringing us. <coughs> oh. Okay. Perfect. Um, so. Do we need a motion or anything or for the suggested changes or what do we need to do? Oh, I need to. Where are we going? Well, we were going to vote to approve it first and all. I'm sorry. Where, but we don't. We shouldn't do that. So no, we should. We, we should. I don't think we have to vote, though. Do we have to vote we to don't. send well, it back? It, we should let it, it might be nice to have a, I, I, you know. And I see Mr. Frost is here from the State Attorney's Office, but for something like this, I don't know if, if it, the question is whether or not the, the committee should vote on the logo. Uh, no. Oh, oh I'm sorry. all you mean? Officially, right, right. formally, oh, okay. or just okay. have a discussion and make a, the recommendation that you just heard tonight and, and, and approve it with that understanding mm -hmm. that that slight tweak will be made, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. Well, I'd rather <laughs> bring it back. Bring it back. Look at it again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would feel more so the because you all might notice something. It's going to be all over the place, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I mean, on yeah, the I website, think, I think on. So. Yeah. Madam Chair, did we sure. vote initially at any time in the past of having a logo? Yeah. If we had that, this means that anything that comes after that would be probably uh, in discussion, and the final version will have the final vote. If, if we established. Okay. We're in the process uh, of doing that, so. Until it's finalized, somebody give us the final version, we can vote on it. But this is a discussion of does it need some change? And maybe we want to see how many people approve, you know, of mm -hmm. the change is needed. Yeah. We suggested a change last time. Also you're very the close, yeah. First and letter of each word. Yeah. It's just a yeah. we may, it may and she made she made the change that you guys suggested last time, but yeah. now we're noticing the hands and the that a, there's some disparity with the hands. B, mm -hmm. that one of the hands is more prominent than the other hands, um, and that maybe maybe we'll do it get, like exactly. We could mm -hmm. ask her to revert the, that. The, the fonts for the each They're very close. The beginning of each yeah, right. yeah. I think, the, but I think it'd be better for everybody to look at it before mm -hmm. we start. Mm -hmm. the, the initial fonts need to be more. It's really not that much of a difference. Hold on, make it, it, it could be a little bit more. Okay. Initial. Okay, so uh, initial bigger and then the next thing. Okay, so I'll take that back to her. Overlap. Yeah. It's a book we have now. No, I'm glad you noticed yeah. it. I hadn't seen that. Um, Sarah knows the guys So maybe it's like the same thing as that thing, which maybe it should not. So the understanding is that we're going to send it back to her and have those changes yep. looked at and then bring it back and then to vote discuss on, yeah, or to vote, vote on later. Okay. okay. So Jane, since we had this whole thing, what do we do to, to do that? I, I apologize. <coughs> we just move to, um, I, I'm just, that, that, that you'll revisit it and. <laughs> All right, so uh, could we have a motion revisit. to revisit after some more revisions are made? Sorry to be. So moved. Second. Is there a second? Thank <laughs> you. Okay. And then. I'll, then it'll be approved with this understanding that it will be approved at the next meeting, it sounds like, because mm -hmm. you're so close. Or that they'll at least they'll get a chance to review mm -hmm. it again. Mm -hmm. Okay. And, um, and I can send it out without mm -hmm. violating any Public Meetings Act for your review before the uh, yeah. meeting, and you could let me know if there are things that, that you, um, with the, the hopefully final version, and then we could vote on it at the next meeting. All right, and I should have had this on the agenda, and I don't know how we missed it, but um, we should welcome and introduce Sarah Birch. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. um, 
We are really happy to have her. Glad you guys got her on the agenda. Yeah, so sorry it took fast. so long. No, um, from and that point. Um, do you, you should say something. I, I sort of introduced you. The council did approve email. Sarah's appointment at our meeting on Monday. Right. Okay. And so thank you for coming on such short notice. Did sure. You? Two days later, you are here. <laughs> I was ready. Um, yes, you were. <laughs> um, but you should introduce yourself. Yeah. I sort of introduced you already. Sure. So. Yes, my name is uh, Sarah Birch. I am a resident of Ann Arbor. Uh, I've been born and raised in this community. I currently work at the University of Michigan as an admissions counselor. Um, today was pretty crazy because decisions were released for early action. <laughs> I heard about running out there decisions. <laughs> yeah, um, and I actually will be transitioning to um, the Opportunity Hub in the College of Literature, Science, and the Arts uh, in January to be uh, a career coach. So I've been at uh, U of M for a little over a year now and have interest um, in being a part of this commission because I have a son that I'm intending um, to raise in this area and I want to do all that I can to be active and involved in this community to make sure um, it's the place that I want to remain at and also see him grow up in. So, Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Pat. We look forward to having your input. Sarah also indicated in her application that she could commit yeah, significant time to the mission of ICBOC, and that's greatly appreciated. And yeah, no, you're, you, you provide us all. And by, when I say us, it was um, uh, City Council, uh, the Human Rights Commission, um, the, the small group of council members, I was one of them, that reviewed the applications. And you, yeah, we you know everyone was um, appreciated your application your interest and uh, and we're glad that you had this opportunity to to join us yeah thanks a lot so, thank you thank you chief <laughs> i don't know what happened he's there <laughs> i'm sorry the chief he, what is he doing? Oh, he was at the I think I think the chair would like you to oh, officially I don't know take a happened. seat at the table. Yeah, I'm sorry. <laughs> oh my goodness! <laughs> just sort of inching back. Um, <laughs> so our next item of business was to review our complaint status and talk about our complaint process. So before we talk about status of the complaints that we have, uh, I think we should speak a little bit to the process. And Francis, you should jump in at any point. <laughs> and Chief, you should jump in at any point. We know that, um, so the, the, we had a process laid out for us with our previous chair and that um, was designed with um, Chris Frost from the city attorney's office. And David, did you help with that process? A little bit. And so there was a workflow process that was created. And um, as we first got um, pieces of information from each complaint from the police department, um, some of those pieces were informative, but some not quite as informative as we, they, we wanted them to be. So we, what we did was begin to ask for additional pieces of information. And <coughs> Over time, it became clear, <laughs> come on in, it became clear that um, the pieces of information or the, the materials that we wanted from the police department in order to be able to review the cases that we had were time consuming and labor intensive for the police to put together for outside public consumption. And then the city attorney's office because they are attorneys, um, would review those materials and redact information to which we should not be privy. And that process was a separate process that also took some amount of time. It became clear that um, if we wanted all of those pieces of materials from every case that we could possibly review, that that would be pretty labor intensive for the police and the city attorney's office. Um, today we had a meeting where we worked pretty hard to figure out a more tenable process. Mm -hmm. And so what we're going to do is, so there are a few things that we think will be helpful, but 
we wanted to convey that it's a work in progress. Mm -hmm. It is a, um, and there will be revisions, I'm sure, at points going forward until we get a process that is smooth, and then it will happen on automatic pilot, and people will never remember that we struggled. What we're going to do now is we have selected a couple of cases that this commission has not yet reviewed, and we have asked the police to produce a summary of information that could adequately describe the case in more detail than the original sort of thing we got before that was called a summary. Not as long as the 20-page investigatory report that they produced for themselves, which would then have to be redacted, which would become untenable again. So something in the middle mm. that could give us enough information with which to work and yet um, be less, uh, be more reasonable for them to produce in a reasonable amount of time. So we have asked for that today. We picked a couple of cases, and we expect to see those in January due to the holiday. Mm -hmm. um, and then we will all look at that and see what questions we might have, what things we might want to ask that we don't see and so we can figure out with the police how we could get information that's usable for us to, to review and feel as if we know what's going on but um, doesn't require that they hire 50 more people to do that work. Um, we, Sorry. The chief also um, suggested and we sort of followed up on and tweaked his suggestion a bit to have um, some for us to participate in some regular meetings where not all of us necessarily but whomever may be working on a case meets with the police regularly so we'll have some regularly scheduled meetings where we can ask some quick questions about a specific case that we're reviewing that might make that more clear to us um, and might be able to answer our questions faster and we would let them know what cases in advance such that they could be ready for additional questions. So they have much more information than what they're going to provide us, and those meetings would allow us to kind of quickly say, okay, but what happened here? Why is this like this? And if we do that on an ongoing basis, um, we will probably not have a backlog of cases, and we um, would be able to get um, additional information without waiting and somebody having to stop fighting crime to give us the information that we need. Um, so I think that's where we are now. It's an evolving process. Um, we don't know what this report will look like, but we're hoping we'll have more info. It just sounds Council like you had a good meeting. I heard you breathing. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> who, and who met you and Chief Cox? Chief and Cox, and deputies, Metzer, Forsberg, uh, Attorney Chris Frost, Attorney mm. Ari Slay, mm. Bonnie Tile, Denise. Yes. I don't know the, 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 the video person's last name. Video. Cervantes. Cervantes. Cervantes, Officer no. Cervantes, uh, Commissioner Chidora Hargraves, and myself. Thank you for being here. So we had a round, fully mm -hmm. fleshed That's out good. attendance at this meeting that lasted nearly 90 minutes, mm. <laughs> but I think we made some well progress. Spent. Time well spent. Mm -hmm. Time well spent, indeed. And, and the key, too, is that this process doesn't, this is the process for complaints that come in through the police department, not necessarily ones that come in through Denise. Ones that come mm. in through mm. Denise <laughs> are able to um, do differently or um, ask more questions. Um, along the, the the way the flow chart is set up, but these are just for complaints that come in directly to PD that we may want to review. And I don't want to suggest you were saying ask more questions that were prohibited from asking <laughs> questions in any way. Right. There wasn't a suggestion no, no, that no. we were limited in any way in terms of what we could ask about. I, I know you didn't say that. Right. I just wanted to make sure that it's not understood <laughs> not in that way. Um, so yeah. this will evolve and. And, and when we get our first we report, should. we'll all look at it and determine, mm -hmm. is this enough information to assess? So you should get um, an email from us prior to our next meeting, prior to our January mm -hmm. meeting, with hopefully with information in it, um, to, with the actual summary 
because we were we were thinking mm -hmm, because we were because um, that's how the uh, question the questions need to come back to Denise prior to the meeting. Prior to having a meeting with right, police about meeting, asking more right, questions, right. right? But I think the commission will look at whether or not this new version of the summary mm -hmm. is sufficient to answer questions we might have about that case, mm -hmm. and if not, what kinds of things might might we need? And we know that would differ from case to case, right? So depending on what the case was, we know that that's going to differ, Commissioner. Sure. I have a couple of questions. One, one of them is how many cases are in a halfway? Like I remember, I was assigned one case. And we submitted the request on the 18th of September, I believe. And we saw only the police video, you know, and there was a lot of information we wanted. Is that going to be dropped? And how many of those are in the process? I don't know what's going to happen to that case, for example, as a result of your discussion. And uh, how many cases are in the midway? And are, are we going to finish them? Are we going to drop them? Are we going to start fresh? Say, forget about these cases. Let's start fresh. I'm not really clear about, I understood the process we were going to do, but what's ha going to happen to all the, I don't know how many there were. There were few. What's going to happen to those? Okay. So the case to which you're referring is 004. And on that case, we saw mm -hmm. um, body cam footage uh, from several angles, several officers. We saw dash cam footage. Um, we read... Um, several things that I'll call reports. I know they might be called something else. Um, and so this new process would not apply to that case because we've seen more things on that case than would mm -hmm. apply to this new process. Um, and then we should come to some conclusion about how we want to respond to the complaint on that case, I think. Um, we have... case um, 006 um, that wasn't actually a police case. It sort of um, it was not involving police misconduct or anything. It wasn't involving any action of the police. The person wanted the police to arrest someone and it's not something the police can do. Um, and so um, we're crafting a response to that complaint. So that would be outside of this. We have 008 is still pending, um, and then we have a cases 9 through 16 where we will use the, for which we will use the new process. So cases we started working on are outside of that process. Um, but we're going to take two test cases, and that's going to be 009 and 11. And I was looking for cases that were contrasting, um, and so the police would have different kinds of information, and we could look at whether um, the information that they provided would be sufficient enough in each of those cases since they're very different from each other. And so we'll get a, a, a sense of how that goes and then we could um, make tweaks and try to figure out what else we could use and then use the process going forward. So we are, so did that answer your question? Kind of. Commissioner <laughs> Altman. Um. There is a little bit of confusion because uh, when uh, the former chair uh, had suggested a list of commissioners who are going to be overseeing looking at the cases, um, um, and I see from what you are talking about is as if that procedure is no more uh, going to be followed. Um, and if this is the case, who is going to be from the commissioners uh, interacting with the police department, looking at the cases, and the rest of the commissioners, uh, what type of role we're going to be playing in evaluating and reviewing those cases. Is it going to be through few of you that are going to be interacting with the police, and you look at the stuff, 
and uh, from your um, property evaluations and reviewing of those cases, you give us a little bit of summary to what you feel that this is really right for all of us to come to know, and then we can make decisions based on that, or we're going to be also looking at details. So we would like to know exactly the role of the rest of the commissioners in this process. So I'm not assuming, I'm not assuming that we abandoned the old process because we don't have a new one in place. Mm -hmm. I think we could revisit it and determine um, if there might be a better way to review them. But I'm not assuming that we abandon that process and I mean that in the literal sense, so I haven't assumed the abandonment of that because we don't have a replacement for it. Um, I sent an email some time ago and asked several of you um, if you were interested in reviewing cases and what that might entail, and several people replied that they were interested, and so we should use those people who were interested and not those people who weren't interested because there are lots of things to do on the commission. Um, and reviewing the data from the police is <coughs> the only thing to do even in terms of, of reviewing them. Um, but we haven't established a new process. I do not do that unilaterally. We as a body need to figure sure. out how to do that. Um, and we don't have a replacement for that system yet, so in my mind, I haven't abandoned it. Um, in asking the police for these two test cases, my assumption is that we would all sort of look at the results of that and then determine if it was sufficient, if it wasn't. Because we'd like to get to a point where um, the police kind of know how much to give us, and I would expect that that would need everybody's input. So I haven't assumed we've abandoned the old process, and we don't have a new one yet. Um, council member, thank you. Um, sorry, sorry to be late and interrupt. Um, but uh, yeah, kind of speaking on what Commissioner Hotham uh, was talking about, um, it was in my assumption, and, and I, that the prior plot process would be followed, and that was where everybody on the commission would be investigating complaints, and it was going to be cycled through and assigned, and these folks are going to follow through to make sure that there weren't any unclosed cases. Um, so I'm just, I know I came in late and I apologize, so I'm not sure what I missed, and I haven't been necessarily following some of these other emails that go on in the subcommittees, uh, but a as a procedure, just uh, better understanding, it, just to make sure that we haven't changed anything. And if we have, uh, we just uh, would like to, to, to know think more of it. Since we institute that process, we realize that much of the time reviewing cases would mean that you'd have to show up at the police hmm. department to, to be on their premises to review um, in the presence of professional standards and police administrators. Um, and everybody wasn't always able to do that. Um, so we haven't changed the process. We certainly should look at whether we need to change the process as well. Um, every commissioner who wants to be involved in that process will do so. Um, but we understood that some of the work could only be done between 9 and 5 in the police building physically. But and that would prohibit some people from uh, uh, participating in that process because of their work <laughs> commitments, for example. I, I would ask for that to be made in a codified way because as far from what I last understood is it was going to be done that other way and, and, and I understand the challenges uh, people face into to meeting physically in, in, in one space but I just don't think that has been done legislatively with, the, with motions and approvals of that type of policy the commission is going to adhere to. When we when we get to the point where we need to, to, when we develop a new process, we will absolutely do that that way. Mm -hmm. We have not abandoned that process to this point, so you are correct. We have not legislatively changed anything yet. We are just understanding that we may need to, to make, the, um, make sure that complaints are reviewed in a timely fashion. Mm -hmm. This process has taken much longer than we thought, right. uh, than anybody thought, yeah. than what yeah. city council envisioned. Um, maybe the, the task force understood how long all of this would take, but I, I think none of us here understood how long that process would take through no fault of anyone's. I, I, I understand and the challenges. It's definitely learning a lot at once, but we can't adjudicate what was, was adopted before. We haven't. 
Yeah. And we will not. Right. So um, I'm Commissioner uh, Tadora Hargraves. I'm sorry. No, and then that's okay. I, I think Uncle what it is is, and you actually just touched on it. Right now, we're not even getting the information for the commissioners to review, and so we have nothing to give the people on that list. And that's what the meeting earlier today was about: was wh what can we do to get this information? And so. We had that meeting, and that's where um, uh, we're going to get these two test cases that are going to, they're not actually test cases, they they're are reports, actual they're complaints. actual complaints, yeah. we're but we're going to get these executive summary type documents to determine then how we're going to continue moving forward. So the actual review process itself hasn't necessarily um, right been changed, even looked right. at or changed in any manner Correct. we're actually looking at how is the what's the best way for PD in the attorney's office to get us the actual complaint information in an efficient manner mm -hmm. because initially the idea was they were going to give us all of these documents that were requiring heavy redaction right. which was then taking up look a lot of time and they didn't have the resources to do that so we're trying to find a better way to streamline what we get initially off the top um, to determine what we need moving forward. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Commissioner Elton. Thank you. So to clarify, as we stand right now, prior to any um, legislative change, uh, if commissioners were to be, I guess, working on a certain case and it contains sensitive or confidential information, um, as it stands, would other commissioners still be able to have that same access, or would it only be allotted to do those you, people? Um, do you mean um, information that can only be shared by visiting them physically? So, for example, dash cam video, we can yes. only see there right, because right. professional standards takes us through mm -hmm. it. Right. And so... Um, I suppose I mean more documents, things like okay. that. Okay. It's, it's all redacted. Right. It's just, so, it's a state. redacted documents, mm -hmm. yes. Wait, I would just make sure you Oh, yeah. Did that answer your question? Yes. Okay, I'm, no. I'm just checking. Okay. I'll just, uh, thank you very much, Chair. Uh, so, so since our last meeting, a couple of us followed up to inquire into the this this issue, you know, the turnaround that was established um, by our ordinance. And so Francis was holding mm -hmm. up the flow chart. And when we approved the ordinance, we said that the police chief shall make the report within 30 days of a complaint disposition. Okay, What's, what have we learned since we approved this ordinance? Well, we've learned that it, it requires a lot more staff time than we ever imagined because there's something called the lien statute, and we have a couple attorneys in the room. Uh, Mr. Frost or Santa Croce could speak to this, and the requirement is that the redactions have to be done by the police. So hence, you know, um, the timing <coughs> issue and... This, a lot of this work has been done by the city attorney's office. Um, Ms. Slay, in particular, uh, I was told it's really not her function of the attorney's office. The responsibility has fallen to the police department. Uh, and I'll just read from the city attorney who wrote, I believe I could say, the basic issue is that the state does not allow a citizen's oversight to review unredacted material and actually considers it a misdemeanor if they do. Um, and so then the city's looking at how this is playing out in other communities. Uh, and so as we review more complaints, we request more material, and please, you know, anyone jump in here and correct me on my understanding of this process uh, and how it works. Uh, so the redaction work is significant and very, very time consuming. I see the chief nodding in agreement and uh, and frankly and the police department today does not have the staffing to do this work. Uh, and so given this requirement an understanding of the staffing associated budget requirement for this work would be helpful. Well that, oh that was that was for me, sorry. I thought, I thought I was quoting staff. But that's that's the You're like, I sorry, I didn't mean to quote myself. I didn't mean to I didn't mean to quote myself. I thought that was a staff person. But that's what I've come to learn and appreciate. And so I appreciate you had this meeting today to work through all of this and figure out, you know, how we can go forward and do our work. So thank you. 
So I, I think it became apparent. I was on one of the first cases, mm -hmm. and it became apparent the whole process of trying to view redacted videos that the constraints with the police department mm -hmm. and where it had to be viewed and how it had to be viewed ended up creating you know problems for commissioners to all mm -hmm. get a schedule together. So I think it's imperative that we come up with some process. Mm -hmm. I think you guys have made some great first steps, but it's apparent to me mm -hmm. that the process that we had in place is not a process that we'll end up with. Because right. that mm -hmm. process, I think, is automatically flawed for us to be able mm -hmm. to do things in some kind of an efficient manner. So. So my under and I participated in the first meeting mm -hmm. where we saw an early iteration of what sounds like a Pay similar off. executive summary. Oh, okay. um, will that? So I just had some some a few concerns and questions. Like, so I'm happy we're trying something. I'm a big fan mm -hmm. of efficiency. Um, I'm glad you guys did the work to sit down and meet with them. Mm -hmm. Does the executive summary, will, will, whatever summary we get, will it include the actual complaint? Will, will we see what's been alleged? Yeah, we, we, mm -hmm. that's what it's going to be. So that question, when we see the actual what we get, if it's not there, we can say we want this added. All right, so that, that's yeah. my next question. So when we can say ask questions, ask questions. Mm -hmm. The, the, um, the, look, I think we have to worry a little bit about, but a little bit I think the process is backwards and that's what we're struggling with. Right? So usually you see a complaint, right? Normal investigative process, this happens, and then you decide based on that what you need. It seems like we're, we, 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 but instead we have is, is placed this burden on the police department and that we're sharing with them saying, tell us what happened and give us what you think we need, right? So it seems, it seems a little backwards, right? The, the legal system works exactly in the opposite way, not that the legal system is a great example of anything. But there's some logic there, at least. Um, I, I'm a little concerned about the optics, right? I think it's it. I, I think the optics of relying on a summary of what happened by the department that allegedly did something wrong is a little tricky. But it may be fine, right? Because it, it may help us weed out cases that. I mean, we had three categories of cases. One was like. Something happened, but it wasn't this, and then nothing ever happened. It kind of was just kind of a whole cloth. I forget what you had different. One was exonerated, and one was unfounded. Yeah, just like it didn't unfounded. like like the reality wasn't there. It might help us weed that stuff out. So there's not a lot of unnecessary information, but I I would suggest if, if we get into points where it's a little more unsure, that maybe it would help to try to switch the order if, if this doesn't work, so that we see what's been alleged. And then say, well, these are the things we're interested in your summary, and also in these things mm -hmm. based on what's alleged. Mm -hmm. So, part of the order has to do with the way the ordinance was written. Mm -hmm. right? that we follow. No, that's right. The police, and then the police do what they do first, and then we come in. So, we're coming in at the back yeah. of it by design, which is nothing mm -hmm. that we can change. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, I think that one of the. Um, I think we will we will be able to ask more questions. We'll also be able to look at the uh, summary that they give us and say we would like X, Y, and Z added to this summary right. on a regular basis. It would become part of the form. Um, the other thing is that when one comes across the table and it <coughs> says that they were exonerated, but we see some things in the summary that might send off some signals to us, we get to say, no, we're, we're going to see more of this. And we want to see, and, and so we may not want to see the, the body cam footage, which is extremely time mm -hmm. consuming for them to redact. We may not want to see that on every one, but we may want to see it in one out of three. You know, that might make, you know, or we may, we may want to look at it and say, this one is something we want to see more of, but they're not all going to be that way. And so, um, or most likely, I hope they're not. Um, I think that. It, because of the amount of or the lack of resources that we have within the staffing right now we, we just we're not going to get anything we're going to get very little I should say I have to be very cautious about what I say 
we would get very little information in a very um, in a time efficient manner because of the staffing. So as they get more staffing and they're able to build what they're able to supply us, then we can make changes if we need to. And, and I, I do want to point out that in a perfect world, the police would have the staffing mm -hmm. to do what we need to do, as with the city council. I mean, right. city, I'm sorry, as with the city attorney's office. That mm -hmm. they'd have a person whose job it was to do this. Mm -hmm. staff too. And I, um, what did you say? So we can use staff too. <laughs> you want city council and staff. <laughs> And so I understand, so I want to I want to yeah. be clear that we understand that we're trying to compromise here to get actually more information than what we're getting in the beginning um, to help us determine what to do going forward. There is no point at which we have ceded our right to ask for any and everything. So I want to make sure that's crystal clear. Um, and we also understand that city council to just give the police a bunch of money <laughs> so that they can yeah. have a person who is dedicated to doing this because it was clear from before we existed that that was going to be time consuming for them to do and they don't feel like they have the uh, legal wherewithal to do redactions such that they are not committing a misdemeanor and thus the city attorney's office needs some staffing to do this job as well. Mm -hmm. So I, I just want to point out that I understand that there's a problem that is bigger than us, and what we're trying to do now is compromise to make sure that we can um, um, do some of the work going forward in an efficient manner, but we are not um, by any means saying that we are going to uh, review less or review less well, or that we're going to, um, you know, we're developing a relationship with the police and um, it's been a good working relationship. We are going to have to trust some of what they say. Um, that doesn't mean that there's there's not accountability. It doesn't mean that we can't, you know, say, ah, but in this case we want to see. So we're not giving up any of that. Um, we were making a compromise to see how well we could work with the things that we have going forward. We also understand that perhaps there will be more complaints in the future. As people begin to understand that there is a body to whom they can complain, complaints may go up. And so this problem isn't going to go away. Um, and, you know, they're going to need some more resources. What we're trying to do is work with what we have right now, but we are not in any way sort of ceding any of our responsibilities. Commissioner Birch. I just was going to um, say something. Maybe I misunderstood something that you had said, um, Commissioner Francis. Uh, but is there. Um, sort of a, a standard procedure a way that all the complaints are investigated? Because I feel like I caught you said that that's not every claim is body cam is reviewed. Or the right. One. So wondering so if that's equitable, if it's not the same. They, that's what we were, were trying to establish. Mm -hmm. And so originally, part of this from this chart here that you would you see are our past meetings, the idea was that each complaint would come through and we would, we would get every single piece, any and all information about the report or the complaint that we would review, which included the body cam footage. Mm -hmm. And what we're finding is that the requirement to have all of that information redacted is what is time consuming and stressing the resources that we currently have. Mm -hmm. So that's why we're back to the drawing board to figure out how can we get some kind of efficient flow so that we can at least get information so that we can start reviewing things. And I think different cases require different things. Sometimes we need to see body cam vi footage. Sometimes the complaint is not necessarily about what happens to a person, and so you okay. don't necessarily need to see that. Mm -hmm. that letter. For now, we will get you one of your own. Mm -hmm. And then when we refer to these numbers, they'll make sense. Will you? Yeah, if I could real quick. OK, uh, can we had you a make sure that you're like, Waving at me, so that yeah, I no know problem. For hey, sure. I appreciate the, I, I appreciate the time. Lally. I appreciate the time, and, and then we're all going to try to get out here so we can start our Christmas Thank earlier. Um, <laughs> I just wanted to say we had a, a budget talk last Monday, at city council and chambers for five hours, six hours, and uh, the police chief came and presented uh, his budget, his needs um, to council, and he's asked for five positions 
you know, and, and I asked, I had to ask, okay, you got to list them one through five because <laughs> probably ain't going to get all five, unfortunately. And so he, he, the department's working with city council, and uh, I think we're going to be advocating, but we want to make sure that our, our funding is going to be in the most effective, in the most effective way. And there's a lot of synergy, I, we hope, with when it comes to funding between the police department and this commission, and and and, and, and getting the resources so that what we're hearing about tonight can get addressed. Uh, and so I appreciate um, this discussion and, and hearing it, uh, publicly here with everybody uh, the um, deficiencies and so we can get uh, the funding to be directed towards correcting those. So I just wanted to chime in on that. That was something that we talked about last uh, last Monday. That was a very productive five-hour meeting. Uh, so I uh, uh, appreciate, you know, I, th I think, you know, if you can perhaps shed some light on this as to, uh, if you can, uh, what, what you think, it, when you can, let us know uh, where that right. can be directed. Well, so, so as you know, I put in a request, and so it's, you know, the process here in Arbor, I'm not as familiar with it as you, but uh, yeah, I'm sure I, I put the press forward, and um, I just, I can follow on. at least the position that pertains to this body, I think you asked priorities was, was very high on the priority list. Okay. So that's... Was that number one or number two? It was number two. Yeah. It was number two. Yes, yeah. it was number two. Are you, gonna, are you still tagging on? Or you I was just going to follow on to what Commissioner Ramawi just said. And uh, just a thought and a suggestion, if I may. So the, the city's budget uh, sort of pre-budget review process, because we get the budget the second uh, meeting in this is established by the city charter in April and also why your work your work now that you're doing on the budget for ICPOC is is very timely and, and really very good work and will be very helpful but in terms of the staffing for the police department uh, to assist ICPOC <laughs> in the kind of work that the ordinance you know laid out that that this committee would do I think it would be I think it would be very helpful and this would help us help you uh, as council members. When, um, so the police department will be making its budget presentation to city council at one of the work sessions in January, February, or March. Probably sometime in January or February, one of those meetings, like every department does. And we can let you know, all of you know, when we're having that workshop presentation. Because I think it would be very helpful for us again to help you to have, and, and at these work sessions, there's an opportunity for public comment, to have members of this committee come and address council and speak on behalf of the need of this committee to do the work that you have been um, commissioned to do and what this work requires. And that today, there is not adequate staffing in the police department to do this work. Uh, that, that you need assistance with so that would be very helpful so we will let you know when that budget work session occurs and then you can come and advocate for yourselves thank you Commissioner El Kalali and then mm -hmm. Commissioner Othman and then Commissioner Amiri in that order um, I just wanted to briefly clarify some of the issues that Croce brought up my apologies mm. um, no you want mentioned something about cases that had either been exonerated or declared unfounded. Um, do we know if we would still have access to those? Yes, and um, if we would also have access to the procedures that would define something as unfounded or exonerated? Yes. Okay, and so are they, is, is it still valid to raise a complaint regarding that case should it be dismissed you mean is it appropriate so for the commission to question well yes that, that, that too yeah. should it be dismissed yes but does i suppose Not i should have clarified does it does it uh, right it exonerated or so those terms are police terms mm -hmm. the exonerated unfounded mm -hmm. sustained are police's mm -hmm. descriptions of the disposition right. of the case even if one, the police have determined that it has been exonerated, meaning that they find that their officers follow the policy correctly, certainly you, the commission would still have the ability to go look at that. And does the person filing the complaint still have the right to um, 
I guess, presented appeal? to the... Yes. Well, would it be an appeal at this point? Because you... I mean, it's still the same body I'm of people. Trying do, to read your mind, Right, sorry. right. No, no, no. I, I get what you're saying. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like, do they still have the right to bring it up again into investigation? An appeal process? You mean well, who would you appeal to? Who would you be appealing to? Chief Koss, can you speak to what <laughs> happens when Sorry, you all respond anything? to a complainant right. and after this process, at the end of your process? <laughs> <laughs> so, we, I mean, you know, correct me if I say it wrong, Jason. We send them a, a letter basically telling them what the disposition of it is. Mm -hmm. and, and as it stands now, we tell them about the, the appellate rights, so to speak, would be to appeal to this body, you know, for a review um, of our findings, so to speak. That, that would be. Mm -hmm. you, I'm sorry to interrupt. Are you asking about the appeal from this body then? If, if they didn't like what the police said, they didn't like what this body said, is, then well, they go to. There, there is no formal appeal from, right, from, right. from either. You did, I mean, you take what they say and you file a lawsuit or you don't. So if, uh, so if a case has been exonerated um, or declared unfounded and it doesn't even reach us, it's that doesn't happen. Wait. It's yeah. going to still reach us. We, Everything we still know us. about it. Everything's going okay. to reach us. And so that's what this is. Do you have one of these? Sure. Thank you. And so... <laughs> So I think 004, is 004 on there near the top? Yeah, yeah. And does 0404 say exonerated? Yeah. Is it very yeah. top? Yes. yes, And so this is a case where the police found that their police officers did everything they were supposed mm -hmm. to do, but we still looked at it. We still looked right. at body cam footage. Okay. We still looked at complaints <coughs> reports and summary reports and professional standards <coughs> reports. And so even though they decided it was exonerated, we decided to take a look at it. Okay. And so that we, can we can always decide to take a look right. at it, but right. we don't necessarily. Okay. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Commissioner Othman. Um, thank you. Um, I think I'm just going to back a little bit uh, and say that uh, our city council is good at approving high rise in the town left and right, and which means that what's going to happen is we're going to increase the population of an arbor downtown over here, and and that would require probably more policing, and part of the commission is really and the mission of, of the uh, new chief was to reestablish this community policing. Mm -hmm. And if we don't have the manpower, this means that, you know, it's like we keep going around in, in circles. So I think they need to have more. And I would love to see that also part of the recruitment to uh, the police is, is staff that would help both the police department commission in their functions to make the process of getting the reviews faster. And I think this is, if there's one person that would, I would insist to have and, and to convey it to, to the council is to have that person. Because if we don't have this person, um, you know, even with the police, with their functions and the uh, their work, they're not going to have even the time to allocate one to do the work that we are asking them to do. So I would like to see that this one person uh, with the knowledge and authority, whatever, to help us uh, bring in all these reviews in, in, in a, a time fashion that we can address and also respond to the community or the complainants. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Amiri. I want to speak to two points. One of them is I still don't have an understanding. Like, there's this, let's theoretically say there's a case that the uh, police officer was generated. We looked at it, we feel that it was, they shouldn't have been examined. I don't know what, what is next. I don't know that we have established what's next. What, what happened? We say, no, we disagree with you. The, the police officer was, you know, it did not follow procedure. What happened after that? That's uh, the second point, which is uh, not related, is I really feel that we are been here around for a set year going in a, in a circle, you know. We haven't done anything of what we are supposed to do. Okay, we haven't got the training, we haven't got this, we haven't got that. But if what is really make this process very slow and not functioning is the lack of help at the police and the uh, attorney's office, then the city is losing $180,000 a year which is our budget, and we are all losing our time. If there's agreement that what is not happening, we cannot move forward because they, you don't have help and the police officer have done that. So the city is spending $180,000 on this commission. 
and we're spending hours and hours on this commission, and we are in a standstill. And it's not like, let's see if we can add the staff. It's not like maybe we can maybe come and talk to the city and see what we can do about it. It's really, in my opinion, it's a very serious defect in this whole process. It, the police have full-time job. And it's a new thing is added to them. And I'm very sympathetic. <coughs> Believe me, I'm sympathetic to the legal staff. That were, uh, because I remember when I looked at the case, I said, you know, for me it was kind of practice, but I was like, I need this, I need this, I need this. And I knew how much time for it to deliver, and they don't have the staff. So I spent all this time reviewing the case and, and trying to figure out to do. We met with other commissioners. We watched it. You know, don't waste our time, don't waste the police time and the commissioner time. If the city is serious about the commission, then we need to look at how we can make this commission function. I mean, we just like we have to be open, respectful to your time and our time. And respectful, I mean, it's a big step for the city of Ann Arbor to create this commission, and it's very much appreciated. But it's like half creation. We create it, but we cannot fund it beyond this. And we have heard that you are the only commission is funded. Fine, we are the only commission is funded. But if we're funded half funding and not be able to function, so what's the point? Don't the city should don't waste their time. So maybe you want to respond to me. So yes. Were you directing that at the chief? Mm -hmm. I mean yeah. part of it is, yeah. is it to Then the chief happen. should feel free to respond. Oh. So I, I'll, I'll respond to you know, when you say when, when you disagree with a finding, you know, what happens for that? Well, that's where the communication begins. You tell me why you don't agree, and then we're going to explain to you how do we can come to that conclusion, and whether to talk about the policies, the history, whatever it is, we should be coming. We should be coming to the same conclusion if we're seeing things the same way. If we're not seeing things the same way. It's because one of us don't have enough information, and so that's part of the process where you know we're supposed to explain you know why it is that we came to that judgment, and we. To be quite honest with you, we should have reasons for coming to that and, and showing you and what have you. Now, there may be a time where we disagree, but usually, in my humble opinion, uh, you know, because I've been through it before, the disagreement might be about a really gray area or, you know, like a policy proce procedure like that. Policing in general, this is just how we do business. And, you know, you might not agree with maybe we shouldn't do it that way, but yet, based on how our training and things of that nature, that's just where we are right now in the evolution of policing. That's the only times where I think that we may not really come to an agreement if it's transparent and we share you know, ideas. But if you don't understand something, that's where the communication could, should happen because we need to spend some time to talk about that. And you might see it from a different perspective that you know it might be close to that gray area. You could give it from another perspective and I might say, or we could come to the conclusion like, you know what, you're right. That, you know, looking at it that way, I think we did follow all our rules and procedures here, but maybe this is something that we should change because of how it's perceived in the community, how this is perceived. So it's an opportunity for us to change as well just by getting input from, you know, you all's uh, you know, involvement with it. That's how I see what happens when you don't agree with something. So. Did, did you speak to your second point? No, I don't think he can speak to my second. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. He's a city well, council member. Well, I, you know, I, I, I can uh, uh, speak you to You are out of order, uh, <laughs> council member. I've been called out. Maui, and so you will hold your I mean, horses. it is not like us versus you, Ali. I'm, I'm, I'm explaining a point of view. I've been here. It's not like we're not happy with the city council. It's a decision was made and appreciated, but it's like having been really thought through thoroughly. So as a result of that, if there is no funding, come to the police and to the at attorney's office. This will continue to be a problem. Uh, because we are told we cannot do our work. We're not getting what we want because they don't have the time and they don't have the funding. And I have to trust that. I don't want to question that. Then the question becomes, what is the solution to that? <coughs> do we want to create a commission, spend $180,000 on it a year, but not provided with the tools to do its job. That is the question that it is on the table. And I say this because I've been coming to this meeting for a while, and we like we become like treading in the same spot. And I'm I'm not. I, maybe I'm the only one who feel that, but I really feel that we are treading 
in the same spot going around and the meeting become redundant and we don't, we're not moving forward. Commissioner Santa Croce and then Commissioner Evans. Quickly. Yes. So in response to your question, what happens? One the ordinance, one point two five I mean I think I think you got a great answer from the chief, you know, about kind of like in the perfect world, morally, what should what should happen? But there's specific there's like there's it's it's laid out in gruesome detail here. Okay. We can disagree, they can disagree. Ultimately, none of it has any any binding legal effect. The complainant is left to their legal remedies. The second thing is, I agree with you that we we we've been we we have a lead, this this committee has a legal obligation that's running into limitations of other of funding other other aspects of, of government i i like that are trying to compromise and figure out if we can make it work within the numbers but ultimately we've got a right to this information in a timely way as written under the ordinance uh so we need to find there needs to be a solution um otherwise it's a mandamus it's a court order for a government entity to do what it's supposed to do commissioner evans I'll, I'll hold. <laughs> what? Um, he's holding his comment. Um, it is clear to me that there is a much bigger problem than one that we can solve by compromising. And I have said a number of times that our that compromising could obscure the problem, right? If it looks like it's working because we're compromising, then it doesn't appear that there's a problem. And one way to make sure that it's clear that there's a problem is to not compromise and to say, hey, yeah. we need stuff in 30 days, we need all of it in 30 days. And then the police probably cannot do that. City Attorney's Office, right. uh, uh, um, Attorney Slay has indicated that, that she mm -hmm. and they cannot do that. And then we are all looking at City Council going, hey, what happened? You guys created this commission. There wasn't enough funding for other people to um, to participate in the process with us. And you probably knew that or could have known, had the ability to know, sorry, not didn't, but had the ability to know, anticipate this before we were formed. And so what happened, right? Um, so I don't want to, I don't want to let anybody off the hook by compromising. And so I think your point about being half-funded is well taken. Okay. You are certainly not alone in feeling like you are spinning your wheels and that we're not making as much progress as we should, as fast as we should. Um, and, and, and so I agree with you that there are some problems um, that were not addressed when we were formed. Council member from well, Thank you. I'm you sorry, like I'm to, sorry to beat a dead horse here. And, and, and Thanks. I don't want people to think like they're spinning their, their wheels, getting nowhere. A year ago, we weren't even here. A year ago, we didn't even know what the issues were. A year ago, so, I mean, it's going to take time. That's government. Uh, but I want to push back on the notion that this is a failure. And this is a failure that, that's been prescribed by council. I think I think we're 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 ahead of where we were last year. We're not where we want to be. We're going to address the issues, but I don't want people to go home feeling defeated. I don't want to go home feeling defeated, and I don't think I think uh, a lot of communities in the, in the country would would take advantage of the of the possibilities that this commission has. Thank you. I think we are taking advantage. Mm -hmm. Shall we move on to new business? Yes. Yeah, Amen. Mm -hmm. Please. Francis. So Commissioner is, uh, Tadora Hargraves. This is our training status. I know we kind of got into a lull. Um, our last training was the excessive force training. I know use there's force. use of force. I'm sorry. We're trained on how to be excessive. <laughs> 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 Mr. Floyd. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right, all right. They don't advertise those sessions. It's a long day. So, so, um, so some folks have not completed that training yet. 
so we still need to get that completed for those of you who haven't done that and we can get with Sergeant Mills to get it scheduled. The other thing is the, um, the Milo training, mm -hmm. and we had a big discussion about that at the last meeting. Um, I believe those dates are still available. You still need people to yes. get back to you. Yes, Did January you leave 14th. That, that it's volunteer? January 14th. January 14th. Yes. For the Milo? For the Milo. Yeah. Um, there was some earlier. There's two. Uh, 5.30 p.m. and 7.30 p.m. On the 14th? That's what mm -hmm. we did, right? No, 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 we didn't do it. What am I going to learn how to do we that? Didn't. Oh, what, 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 we didn't do it. We didn't do it. That was yeah, use yeah. of force. That was the classroom oh, stuff. Oh, right, right, right. Okay. We didn't okay. do yet. So January 14th, what are the right. times again? 5.30 and 7.30. And then another one at 7.30 p.m. Yes. And so the other training that I believe not everyone has done, and, and Sarah, you get to catch up on all of this all together, so you get lots of fun, is the ride along. Mm -hmm. So, and also if you did do your ride along, but you would like to try a ride along in another shift, um, let Denise know um, that, that it is a different experience in Ann Arbor at various times. Um, and we've talked about that quite a bit too. Um, also look at the events calendar for the weekend too, or the, the day that you're going, because that can add some excitement to your ride along also, depending on what's going on at that time. Yeah. <laughs> you did on a football game weekend. That's right. You? That's right. A football game weekend, which we won't have any of those. But if we make the final four, you know, I, I don't know. <laughs> Ride alongs might get suspended during that time, but we don't know. Um, so um, just to stay on top of the trainings, also I've spoken with um, DC Forsborough about the mental health training that um, the officers go through. Mm. Um, I went through a very similar training many, many, many years ago when I worked here at the city, and it was extremely, extremely helpful for me to be able to um, work with folks that came into the mayor's office. Mm. And so um, I think that it will be good for us, and, and I been work, wanna work with Jason to see if there's a way that we could get an introduction into what the officers are trained in this um, respect. And what it is is basically to um, get some background on folks that may have mental health um, <coughs> crisis or things that they're going through. It helps to understand how to communicate with them um, and things like that. So it was extremely beneficial, I know, for me. And I think um, it'll be good for the commission to get understanding of what the officers are trained for when they're working with um, that demographic um, in the city. So. We also have some readings for everyone, yeah. and we're going to try to not yeah. overload you, um, but we have some readings from the um, National um, Association yeah. of Civilian Oversight um, that it seems that Civilian Oversight Commission should be up to date on. And so we're going to start sending out these readings, and we understand you are not my college students. However, and there's no homework or test, but um, there are probably some things, including just a teeny bit of case law in which we, with which we should all be familiar. And so we're going to try to start sending that out um, in, in, in increments such that it is not horribly overwhelming. Um, but we do need to start thinking about um, more oversight information of which we should all be aware. Um, sure. Commissioner Evans. In regards to the mental health training, mm -hmm. is that something that's kind of um, on the forecast for this particular group? I would like to get <laughs> okay. it there. Yeah, that's my goal. And, and I spoke with Jason, they go through this training on a rolling basis, correct, the officers? So, so it's ongoing for them, but I thought it would be nice for us to get familiar with it so that we have an understanding of it also what and the or what the police get trained in but then also I know that we've had the public come to us about these same issues um, I dealt with it many many years ago with the panhandling task force yeah so we had another aspect to it that I'm also investigating and possibly bringing back mm -hmm. but that's another um, a, another item 
But for this, I just feel like um, it gives us the knowledge and background of what the department is doing so that we can then answer the public's question. Or if a complaint were to come in, um, in a situation regarding the mental health crisis, we would understand that, that, that training that they go through too. And let me underscore that I, I received a similar training. It was called Mental Health First Aid. Mm -hmm. um, when I was serving in Birmingham, Alabama, yeah. uh, because houses of worship are also places where people yeah. who may be experiencing some mental health crisis exactly. will, will arrive. Mm -hmm. And um, it was just invaluable, mm -hmm. um, just that experience and exposure yeah. to be able to not completely identify, because we're not clinicians per se, right. but to be able to recognize, mm -hmm. you know, and, mm -hmm. and the best means, because oftentimes in those situations, people may call the police. And yes. if the police themselves may not be trained, it may yeah. be a different sort of situation or, or mm -hmm. circumstance. But I'm, I'm glad to hear that and look forward to it. Yeah. Commissioner Birch, were you? Did you oh, I'm sorry. You are first. And then <coughs> Commissioner Hoffman. Does the police department or this commission receive unconscious bias training? Mm -hmm. That. Yeah, the department does. So the department does. I found it to be helpful um, when I had undergone that with other staff members. Being on we haven't done it as a body. Some of us have done it individually. Um, Do you and I know that hmm? implicit. Implicit is that what you mean? Um, the, it's it's termed in the diversity, equity, inclusion initiatives at U of M is unconscious gotcha. bias okay. training. So sort of biases we don't really probably aware and, of. and we should probably explore that as a group mm -hmm. as well. On the training topic, I just no wait. Commissioner Hoffman and then Council Member I just, I, I just have one Getting thing. a gavel. It was, as I mentioned last time, the 14th of January would not be a good time for me. However, I went through the Citizen Academy, uh, through the city over here, also with the uh, Sheriff's Office uh, for the simulation. So maybe those two would be sufficient. Uh, mm -hmm. Yes. Council Member Lum. Uh, I'll share just on the training front, and uh, I don't know if, if you're aware of this, uh, and it's a relatively new thing, that the city's developed a diversity, equity, and inclusion plan, and as part of that, um, we've retained a consultant uh, to, uh, this, is a, this is a joint city-county undertaking, and we, in fact, this consultant came to our council meeting on Monday, Dr. Shirley Davis from SDS Global Enterprises is the consulting group. Um, and they are going to be providing the training. And we were introduced to her associates. And there was a lady there who, oh, who she was wearing a badge, said captain. Turns out she's captain from the Boston, uh, retired from the Boston Police Department. So I'm sure you know. No, 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 LA. LA. She's from LA. Oh, LA, LA, that's right. Yeah, LA. She's captain of yeah. LA. Yeah, not Portland. Another wrong, big city. Wrong <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> so, Right, she's from Los Angeles, and um, so the council, uh, we will be having this training, but I'm, I'm reading, you know, from the plan, it said they're going to, um, part of this plan is to determine where the city is and organization stands, culturally with regard to diversity and inclusion, the focus groups, and they're going to be doing some training for various focus groups. So maybe there's an opportunity here for anyone interested from this committee. The focus groups will be divided into five groups. City staff, city council, commissions and city leaders, uh, Ann Arbor leadership, managers and supervisors. So the fact that they listed commissions in there, you know, maybe this group would want to send a couple. This is going to kick off. We were, we were supposed to do it. At, it's It's been canceled and rescheduled, uh, and I know now it will occur sometime in January, I think, is perhaps it's our training, mm -hmm. our focus group maybe. So that I can send you the information about this, and, and Denise, is, maybe you can then I send this on to the chair, mm -hmm. and yeah, and if anyone here oh, has an interest in that, it's called um, Diversity and Inclusion Focus <sighs> Group training. I was contacted by a woman asking me to help with it. Oh, but really? nothing ever oh. came of it. So I'm glad something happened. <laughs> yeah. Well, they they haven't kicked it off yet, but this 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 training, these focus groups yeah. will I think s be launched. Okay. This work will start in January. And how do we go about expressing interest to represent the commission? And I think you all should pay I'll her send so that all of us get to be <laughs> up her feet a little bit. I think that's <laughs> most appropriate. Um, 
Yeah, this seems like to hit a sweet spot with what this group is about. Mm -hmm. All right, so thank this you. This type of training. I'll, I will send this to you. I think that moves us into trespass a little bit because I just want to bring this up because this is going to be on the horizon for us. So the Human Rights Commission has been working on trespass, how trespass is used, um, who gets um, trespass citations, etc. And I know, Chief Cox, you've been working with the Human Rights Commission a little bit, um, talking to them to, about trespass, have you not? Uh, I am not personally. I mean, we've had a conversation. Okay. No. All right. That you've had a conversation with the yes. Human yes. Rights Commission about trespass. Yes. The Human Rights Commission um, was looking at trespass and has been looking at it for a while, in part because we didn't exist yet. They are very clear, however, that it's not their mandate, it's ours. And hmm. so they are going to turn over trespass to us, which means that they are going to give us all the materials that they've had. They're going to talk to us a little bit about their concerns about trespass. Um, uh, how is trespass used? Is it used disproportionately against some groups as opposed to others? How is that data documented, uh, are documented? Is it documented? Is it in a database or is it on legal pads in somebody's drawer? Um, and how we can think about trespass going forward. Um, their indication to me was that Chief Cox would welcome some guidance in that area regarding the policy of trespass and whether there might be room for clarification on that. So um, I just wanted to bring up that in January, um, the Human Rights Commission, some of the Human Rights Commission members will be joining us to talk about trespass. So our big items in January will be the budget, which we'll hear some of in a few minutes, but um, we will um, work on the budget, but also trespass. Um, and, and so we, um, they will send us some documents that we need to read before that conversation, and we really need to read them so that we are briefed and that we understand where we are before we hit that meeting um, so that it can be most effective. So you should expect some of those documents um, in the middle of January from the Human Rights Commission. Um, and so that was just a brief heads up, it's coming our way thing. Yeah, quick question. There is a trespass ordinance already, correct? Mm -hmm. And so what we're, we'll be doing is sort of looking at how it's enforced or those kind of things, right? Not revisiting, rewriting an ordinance or making suggestions to it or what? It's, that's kind of what I heard is that they would like some suggestions made okay. to it. But um, I don't know how far it's gone already, and I think it's more about us being able to find out exactly what's going on, how is trespass being enforced. Okay. Um, the idea of how many, how many trespasses or calls in in a complaint, or how many is it that the department has, um, and I'm, the word is escaping me right now, but they basically have authority to um, read trespass. Right now, it could be an owner or an occupant can ask for trespass to be read, mm -hmm. but in some cases, the owner or occupant has signed off that authority mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. be. Mm -hmm. So it's getting an understanding of, of how it's actually working, and um, we discuss different situations that we knew of, of how it works, and what the Human Rights Commission is hearing how it works. So there's two, there, there's a way that we need more information, basically. And there's a specific complaint about trespass that will come to us. Mm -hmm. um, did it come already? Yes. Okay, it's already here. Um, <laughs> and so we'll also look at it from that perspective as well. But, but there is some concern that it is enforced with some mm -hmm. disparity. Mm -hmm. But how to know that? Council well, Member Ramlawi. I was on the Human Rights Commission for the, my first full year, and I've actually had a, um, I stepped aside starting 2020 uh, for, for a reason that the folks that get a, uh, appointed to this commission, um, me, Council Member Grand, Council Member Lum, and at the time that this was done, but I'm kind of going back a little mm -hmm. far, but there's two liaisons on each of these commissions, Human Rights and Big Pac that appoint these commissioners, and I didn't want duality okay. being on human rights and this, I just felt you know, put some daylight, mm -hmm. another person involved in that selection mm -hmm. committee process. So mm -hmm. that's why I stepped aside and come, 
going forward. That being said, I was there for the first year when trespass is being discussed, and actually they were talking about it before I even joined the Human mm -hmm. Rights Commission, so it's been going on for two years there. Mm -hmm. uh, and so there's been a lot discussed about it, how, how it is enforced, and the length of time of enforcement. Right. Uh, it's been a big issue with members on the Human Rights Commission. They wanted less than a year, mm -hmm. uh, where that was going to be really hard to, 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 to do for many different reasons, um, for lack of consistency, you know, when you apply it, <laughs> you know, and this and that, and rights of property owners and, and such. Uh, but then you have, you know, folks that, the Blake Transit Center, they have mm -hmm. certain, the mall has a certain unique trespass mm -hmm. kind of um, condition, the library, bus stops, right. parks. How, where is trespass, how long each, one of these different places has a different mm -hmm. way of enforcing it. So um, they, they want, uh, you know, this body, I think, to look at, again, how it's being applied and a lot of it's being, a lot of it centers around the, 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 the discrepancy, or I should just say discrepancy, but the kind of um, uh, judgment call the, the police officer makes when issuing trespass. There's you know, the, de the decision tree. How do you decide on who gets trespass and what are you using? And that's just, <laughs> right. we have been talked about for well over a year. So um, that's a little bit of heads up, but it's, it's more about the policy. And, and of course, if, if there's a complaint now that there is, there's an investigation, there's a body that can do the investigation. So that's all I'm saying. So. All right. And I think that it's, um, that is one of the things I think, and the other thing is that when the actual property owner calls and says, I would like trespass read, hmm. um, how does the officer know, is this the first time, have they tried working with the person, what's necessarily the history behind it, and um, whether or not they're actually asking those questions before they're just reading trespass. Like We had a situation in our neighborhood where the, the property owner had asked them many times and initially they would leave and everything and then after like a month of going through this they finally said no we're not leaving and they started getting aggressive and removed and refused to leave the property so that's when police were called in so every incident is different and the idea is um, are the police even asking those questions when they get there you don't know But I heard you breathing. Oh, I'm sorry. I should say anything. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, uh, I did observe a trespass on my ride along, uh, just anecdotally. Uh, so I did a ride along. Uh, the officer I was riding along with was was responding to a request. Uh, it was dispatched to the Blake Transit Center, and uh, they were called by AATA's security person. So they no longer have police officers there. Uh, they used to apparently pay for mm -hmm. an officer to be assigned to the Lake Trans Center. Don't do that anymore. So it was a security person who called the APD dispatch to request a police officer to come and uh, remove this person who was assaulting other people, apparently. Um, and so uh, on my ride along, the officer... Uh, had a nice conversation with this individual and then informed her that they would be issuing, that we, the city, whatever, would be issuing a trespass. And this was all in following up to this dispatch call that I observed. Uh, a, a trespass uh, restriction uh, for this person, you know, basically to stay away from the Blake Transit Center. Uh, and. They were informed on the front end. This, this is my anecdotal, you know, experience, one-time experience with this. So, yeah, that was my take on the that aspect of the protocol, I suppose. And it's so challenging because are you um, barred from entering the building, or are you barred from being on the premises and catching a bus somewhere? And this is where it gets tricky. Are you restricting people's access to move around? So, um, so we will we'll be taking that on as a group. Um, I'm going to skip over the formation of a nomination committee um, that will be, uh, the discussion of it, that will be coming for us and we can talk about it just in the interest of time because 
I know that we need to, I didn't know what you were doing, um, need to get communication from the budget committee. There was quite a bit of discussion last time about the budget committee. Work has been done in the interim, however, and Commissioner Evans is going to lead us through it. And you Should may have a lights? visual. Dim the lights? Oh, I can turn the lights. Oh, awesome. Want to put it up? Will it turn the heat up? I'm at This is the temperature. No, this. Oh, okay. Turn the heat up. Okay. Could you all do good? Could use this. I press it. But then all of them. The open source is just my eyesight. That's not pleasant. That's good. Okay. Because then we'll all go to sleep and that will be in there. So. Okay. That's Well, thank you, Madam Chair, for this opportunity. Um, I serve on the Budget Committee with um, Commissioner Walter, who could not be here. And actually, both of us have been out of the country uh, at various points since our last meeting. So while progress has been made, there's more progress which still needs to be made. And I think we also have a handout that provides some narrative for some of the decisions mm -hmm. that we made in adjusting or amending the budget that was shared at the last meeting. Um, and I won't. Uh, read it for you, but just to give you uh, some of the highlights in regards to the narrative component uh, for the notes for the City Fiscal Year Budget of 2021. Uh, the first um, aspect is just a recognition, first and foremost, that we are, are learning this process. We are well aware that this commission is the only commission which has a budget, so we're grateful uh, for the task force, for the city councilors who fought for that. and. Um, we are, as I've said before, cooking and eating at the same time. So we're, we're learning this process as we move forward. Um, the second portion of the narrative talks in regards to uh, the imperative um, for our city council, or just our strong request and desire that both the attorney's office and the police department have the resources which they need in order to do their job well to provide the information with the commission that the commission needs um, because it's hard for us to justify asking for $150,000, $180,000 when we're not able to do the job that we have been assigned to do. The third uh, bullet point speaks to the building of capacity for this particular commission, understanding that we are all commissioners with term limits. Um, so in order to have some institutional knowledge, some organizational knowledge, um, persons such as um, Sister Denise, who is here, mm -hmm. uh, part of the training has to, you know, stay here with the commission, even though the commissioners will rotate. Then uh, the fourth component just speaks to that there may be points and times in which there is an emergency which we cannot foresee at the time. And so part of um, our desire is to be able to um, come for emergency funding if there need be an emergency, and we hope that that is not the case. And the fifth component speaks to um, one of the issues which came up when we shared the draft budget on last month, one of the things that was a glaring uh, aspect of the budget was the amount of money that was spent on training, particularly for those who desired to go to the Nicola conference. Last year it was here in Detroit. Uh, next year it is in Tucson, Arizona. It moves from year to year. It is the one of the premier organizations which provides training, information, um, efficacy, engagement, not just at the training sites themselves, but also um, if you go on their website, there is just a plethora of information mm -hmm. regarding um, ways in which the group can be trained. But the information which comes forth at the conferences, uh, some of the cutting edge information. And so the conversation that I had uh, with Jude after our last meeting was to make sure that the budget also included a component that if commissioners wanted to fund their own travel um, to go to these meetings, that they were, you know, by all means allowed to do so, but we did not want to make that a restriction that all commissioners were expected to fund their own travel. Um, so the budget which we have before us, uh, it's broken into uh, four separate categories, excuse me, five separate categories. Uh, the first of which, uh, the largest component of our budget are our administrative cost, um, which covers the administration for the work that is done through our very uh, capable administrator who keeps us on task and on target. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> uh, after which is um, commission planning and continuous learning, and that in and of itself is $3,800. If you come to the next component, which is our community engagement and outreach community connection, that's a total of $3,600. 
Uh, the complaint review, which is um, the $25,000, is not simply in-house, but it's also to acquire uh, outside counsel, which our ordinance does allow this commission to do. Um, and you know, while $25,000 looks like a lot of money, um, and no offense to the attorneys who are around the table, we know that that is not um, an extraordinary amount of money as far as um, providing for uh, legal uh, services and um, information. The next component, which is also a very large part of our budget, the $30,525, includes training. Not only does it include training, but it also includes membership with um, the Nicole organization. And then also bringing outside guests, experts, professionals to come to us uh, to provide uh, information and awareness regarding uh, some of the issues we may face. Um, as a draft, and I do repeat, as a draft, um, and I believe that uh, before she left, you did ask if there were any other comments, concerns, questions in regards to the budget, and we are still open to that process. Um, the budget which we, at this point in time, uh, would like to discuss among this group with the expectation that in January we will have a finalized draft mm -hmm. budget, I know that's an oxymoron in some ways, um, to present to the City Council uh, for their review at the retreat is a grand total of $149,525. Thank you. Um, so two comments quickly and then uh, Council Member Ron Lowry. Um, one, the city uh, manager has suggested that in the notes somewhere, um, as we present this to council, you remind council that we did not spend all of our money in the prior fiscal year, and that they will be that that money will go back into the that the money's not spent will go back into the general fund, and that that should be a consideration. Um, the mayor suggests also that the budget reach $150,000 because that's what it was last year and you should have $475 on the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well um, Council Member Ram uh, Lowry and then uh, Commissioner Amiri. Am I in the way at all? No, not at all. Okay. I mean, we might go back up to the, uh, the, the first slide um, just to look at that one more time. And I appreciate the time that you put into this. I mean, it came back here, um, you know, tenfold from the first incarnation. Uh, I talked with Commissioner Evans, uh, Jude, um, before, right before a, a, a council meeting, I think it was the December 2nd council meeting, um, and we had a really good discussion on this. Um, she wanted my input, and, and I see a lot of it mm -hmm. in there, um, and I thank you for that. Um, uh, the one thing I'm going to say is, like, when it goes to those um, IGPOC, or not uh, the Nicole conferences, it's, it's really hard for us to say we're going to pay for someone's vacation, right? You know, it's, it's just, in our seats, you can't do that. And I would just... So know, no one I, would vacation. <laughs> so they would I would try to perhaps say, you know, and I, we could take this offline, uh, Council Member Lum perhaps later, but how we pay for, you know, to get into the conference and maybe a per diem for food mm -hmm. but you know travel expenses will be on you know the commissioners but and, and because it's going to be very hard for us to put somebody in a plane mm -hmm. uh, that I tell you is going to be very difficult in, in our positions for so many different reasons one of them being the emergency climate action that we, we declared earlier this month so air travel is going to be very scrutinized mm -hmm. uh, but you know if we're not paying for it then it becomes less scrutinous uh, but to actually get into the conference pay for things pay for people's uh, make make it a, a way where you know that I could that you know just taking that one more level if possible I like the twenty five thousand dollars for for additional um, uh, resources um, and you know uh, I'll leave it at that for now I know a lot of people got to say stuff Commissioner Mary you know, I was going to ask a question, maybe you answered it already. Now, if we don't spend all the money, it does not roll to the following year. No, there's no, no rollover. No. Right. So it goes have back. we used more money? That's true for every, so every function in the city. Excuse me? If you don't use it, you lose it. You don't use it, you lose it. Okay. Other questions? <coughs> Commissioner Birch? Uh, I'm also on the Washtenaw County Community Action Board. And they had considered like a stipend for childcare costs while commissioners were mm. 
present? Mm -hmm. I don't know if that could be worked in potentially. Um, um, uh, stipends for child care costs are um, increasingly discussed in terms of um, making sure that people can attend conferences who are parents and um, not making parenting a barrier to attending conferences, which it often is. And so that is something that we should consider. Mm -hmm. And I believe the task force and their um, conversations and working through um, that was part of mm -hmm. uh, the budget, so that's certainly yeah. something. That is a, an too. item that you see more and more often mm -hmm. because parenting can be a barrier to getting additional training mm -hmm. or exposure if mm -hmm. you are, et cetera. And so that is super important. I would just Council like Member to Long. thank you, Reverend Evans and, uh, and Commissioner Walton, who couldn't be with us tonight. Obviously, he spent a lot of time and effort on this and it's it's a very thoughtful presentation and I appreciate the rationale that you've laid out. It'll I think help again kind of you know make the case for these allocations that you're proposing. And um, so thank you for all the work. I know you met with the CFO uh, to learn more about the city budget process and and these recommended funding levels. And I will just say on the training um, I think these are much more reasonable numbers, uh, and you clearly heard what was stated at the last meeting. And just to put this in perspective, the city budget, annual budget for the entire police department training is $50,000, which is not to suggest, I mean, it's supplemented with 20, up to 25,000 maybe max from, yeah, give or take, from state and federal government. So which is not to say that that's adequate funding, um, but that's where we're at. It's, it's probably woefully inadequate. Um, and so I'm not using that necessarily as a justification, but I'm just as, as to, to put this number in perspective. But, I'm sorry. Councilman, <laughs> uh, Commissioner, you know, for, for the training, I mean, we are new, and, and, and we will not require the same kind of funding for training and learning in the next year. I mean, it is it is like you have to invest. Uh, my thinking is like maybe in the beginning we need to invest in training this commission to know how to do their job. If we do that, then we will not need the same amount of, of investment in the following years. Um, also, I just want to make sure that we are clear. Um, when we attend conferences, we work there. We don't mm -hmm. vacation there. Um, mm -hmm. Several of us were in meetings from 8 a.m. until 9 p.m., um, but we diligently mm -hmm. took notes and brought that material back to this group. Many people travel to conferences where they work extraordinarily hard, they don't vacation. I am sure that NACOL will have their conference in Akron or someplace where no one wants to go. Um, and we will again attend, I'm sorry, Akron. I apologize. Nobody I just mean that it's not necessarily seen as a vacation destination. And we will attend even when it is in Akron. So the fact that it is in Tucson, Arizona, should be irrelevant to the process. Um, and um, we could also consider the driving and the emissions that we used when driving, and we'll probably do that again. So I'm sure there are many considerations. Um, the location may be Arizona or Ohio, maybe should not be one of them. <laughs> and I would not want to suggest that any commissioner would be there vacationing and not working extraordinarily hard because that is what these commissioners do. Um, is there, I don't think, the outreach, did you have a comment? Just quickly, as someone who was... Commissioner Santa Cruz. Someone who wouldn't support the first draft, mm -hmm. uh, I feel it necessary to say that I support this draft. I'm super appreciative for the work that's mm -hmm. going into it between now and then. I still think we've got to think longer term. You know, people will do, uh, I forget what the max term on this committee is. Three, Three years. Well, that's Three a, years a single twice. term, but I think no, the city. There's two terms. So it's, a, it's, it's like the other commissions. It's a six year total. You'll get people who, in my experience, you, you'll turn over quicker, you'll turn over right. longer. Some people will come for a year and get off. Some people right. will come for three and want three more. And only do. We're going to have to figure out something longer term that's a little more grounded once. I think we this group gets better grounded and figure out what the job is and that's what the training really I mean we're a little bit we kind of have an idea but we're taking a pot shot because we haven't really done the job yet oh pot shot is not accurate that's not good 
<laughs> it's better than no shot. Retract yeah. that and go again. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, but I like the shot we're taking. Hot or not? Okay, good. That sounds better. And, and I would, uh, I would, uh, I would vote for this budget in a heartbeat. And I'm super appreciative of the work. Mm. Thank you. Comments, Commissioner Hoffman. I think what we should do is, is you know, out of town kind of meetings are very infrequent. And, and we have to really also focus on in-house training. And, and, and yes. I would see that there is a need for a budget that would cover the in-house training, whether bringing in uh, experts or having workshops or having retreats or having all that stuff. And, and that also would address the, the notion that we have commissioners who are going to be here for a year or two or three. <coughs> and uh, having established uh, a, a training in the place over here would address the bringing the level of understanding and uh, efficiency and proficiency of, of the commissions or commissioners. And I, th I think uh, having uh, part of that budget uh, uh, in the total budget is really important. Thank you. The outreach committee does not have a report for us to no. do today. Okay, I just wanted to double check. And then that takes it back to you again. <laughs> Uh, because community liaison is on the, I don't know if you would like to report out. Uh, Commissioner Evans. This report will be uh, much more brief than uh, the budget report. We extended an invitation for individuals who wanted to work as far as crafting um, some guidelines in regards to community liaisons with our ordinance also allows us to, um, I've not heard back from anyone other than uh, Madam I mean, I'm sorry. Uh, my my yeah. apologies. It hasn't come to you yet. Okay. Well, it's not, well I'm excited about yeah. that um, that possibility. When, what I had shared at our last meeting is um, when, when first invited to apply, I thought that the commissioners themselves would in some ways serve as the community liaisons. Mm -hmm. But I see um, the commissioners, particularly for this first term, as the engineers and the architects of this mm -hmm. process. And... Um, as we continue to expand our reach, our influence, there are members of uh, the community, members um, who have that cultural capital, for lack of a better term, who may be able to reach individuals mm -hmm. who may have had an adverse experience or anyone who wants to bring forth a report. Um, it just expands our ability um, so yeah, those persons who serve as liaisons are not by not commissioners per se, but they are trained in such a way that they understand the process of this particular commission. And so when they hear something, they can then share the information or even bring that individual to us to help them to complete the reports if any help is needed so that we uh, can do what we've been commissioned mm -hmm. to do. And so uh, we'll be talking more about what that process looks like. If you have recommendations, even if you yourself don't want to serve on this committee of individuals who can serve as liaisons, that would also be, be most helpful. Thank you. And we also wanted to make sure that the process of finding, selecting, utilizing liaisons was transparent to the public. And so we, part of the process will be to talk about how that process and to, to show that process to everyone. So thank you for all of that work. Lots of um, I need, um, I would like to add something to ag the agenda, and I know that for that I need a nomination. Um, Robert's Rules allows for something called for the good of the order, or for the good of the uh, group, and I would just like, if, could I have a nomination to add accolades to this agenda? I nominate accolades. Thank you. Is there a second? <laughs> second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. So before we adjourn, I wanted to acknowledge at our... Um, last meeting of the year, the invaluable help mm. of Denise Janess. Mm. Yes. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you could not have done this without oh. this from the commission. Oh, no. um, Thank you. That is so thoughtful. <laughs> Thank you. Well she does the work that we need her to do, but she does work that we don't know we need. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. She has been helpful. She has been educational. We value you far more than this says, and thank you. Oh, thank, thank you so much. much. I appreciate it. Um, I appreciate thank you. you. <laughs>
I appreciate, appreciate you all. Thank, Thank you so much. <laughs> we, yes. We appreciate you. Yes. You Thank you. you. Yes. And to tack on to this. So this week, Denise spent three days working on putting together a newsletter for us. Wow. So we do have a small, a small email chain together that she started sending out the newsletter to. So that we can help with if we do at the last minute cancel meetings or, or change, move them or make any changes. We also will email out our agenda for these meetings and everything. So she did a great job doing that. And that was in response to last month's meeting. So she did all that mm -hmm. within a month and got it up and running. So it was That's awesome. Great. And you're such a dynamo. And she got a response already. So yes. She sent it out this afternoon. and. Um, one of the members no of the public responded to her, mm. so we, we know it works. Yeah. We know that we need it. It's awesome. Yeah. So is it, is it going to be on the website, or you're going to send you it can to us? link back to the website mm -hmm. and subscribe to the subscription, and then each month it will update you on the agenda, or if you have a outreach feedback session, then it will let you know where it's at, and if we change it, then it will automatically update it. Every month. Cool. Awesome. Oh. If you have something that you want to go out in like a newsletter blast, mm -hmm. you can draft it and send it to Denise and just say we need this to go out in newsletter blast mm -hmm. to the public. And, you know, we'll encourage people to sign up for it and give us their emails. And she, we can't do it, but Denise can. Yeah. So we just send her what we want in there and she'll get it out. She's a can't do person. <laughs> <laughs> Is there a, what a nice Commissioner Hoffman, were you about to say something? I would say a motion to adjourn. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> there is a second. Public second. commentary, don't you have to give up? Oh, yes. Public offer? commentary, I do not know why. We actually do not have to, but we oh, should we since we have someone from the public. If there is anyone who would like to make public comments at this time, they should feel free to come forward. No comments <laughs> at this time. <laughs> then we Happy can entertain your so motion. Well. Second. Okay. All in favor of the journey. Aye. Thank you. Happy holidays. Thank you. Oh my gosh. Happy holidays.